I'm quite familiar with this installation when it was made, and uh, it was uh, the the standards were very adequate. What do you think could have caused it then? To me, there, there had to be one or two things. A direct lightning hit could have caused it. And uh, this front, however, I think uh, I wasn't in the area at the time, but I have seen lightning I hit a tower and uh, cause a, a fire like this. Or other than that, it had to be some uh, uh, liquid that was very volatile. You mean arson? Well, it could possibly. Anything's possible. I would say either that or lightning. Now, when lightning hits a tower, uh, it can do a, a tremendous, on a direct hit, it can more or less cause an explosion. So I think it's one of the two. But I can tell you that if unemployment continues its rise and is not checked in inflation and there's not some equity brought about in the national tax structure and we don't stop this subversive element who are out to destroy the very fabric of our society and even our own lives, then I don't see why it might not be necessary for those like you and I to again go out and speak in Dallas and San Diego and Manchester and to speak in Boston.
The fire did its work in about 10 minutes, just after 8 o'clock this morning. Destroyed was a minimum of $80,000 worth of equipment. Three transmitters belonging to KDNT were lost, also a civil defense transmitter. Arson has been mentioned as a possible cause of the blaze. The consulting engineer of KDNT, George Marty, said the blaze could not have been caused by the equipment. Uh, I say it's unlikely. Uh, in, in the past 35 years, uh, I've never seen exactly the same thing happen. I've seen fires in transmitter buildings, but they were normally contained to within the rack of equipment to where they started. And in my opinion, I don't think it was a uh, internally generated fire. I think it had some outside help. Fire department officials probing the scene of the fire south of Denton have not pinpointed the cause of the fire, as told by Denton Fire Marshal Joe Irwin. Well, it's too early to tell, really. There's no indication of arson, there's no indication of electrical wiring, but that does not say that neither of the two caused the fire. It's just too early to tell. It won't take a lot of looking at. How long do you think the investigation will take before you know what happened? Hopefully by tomorrow afternoon we'll have an idea, at least, you know, about what we think happened. The civil defense building adjacent to the fire was not harmed, and whatever caused the blaze, the rains that are drenching the area now came about three hours too late to possibly save part of the building. Since the blaze involved government property, the FBI will probably be called in for an investigation. Meanwhile, KDNT will hopefully be back on the air by Tuesday. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move, south of Denton. What can be done to stop this holocaust? I served 42 months in the South Pacific and willingly risked my life because I was convinced that I was making the world safe for my children. Thank you, Governor Wallace, for listening to me, and I hope and pray you and your party can gain the power needed to bring this horror to an end. And here's a letter from Charles A. Nichols of Corpus Christi, Texas. Enclosed is my $100 check for the Wallace campaign to continue. This is a must at all costs, because where else do people like myself look to outside of Jesus Christ for truthful answers but Governor Wallace? Folks, if you'll pick up your envelope, this envelope, and just look at it, you don't need to wave it there yet, and open it up, and let's look inside it. First of all, you'll find a little card that will enable you folks to receive the Wallace Stand. Receive it each month. And also a personal letter from Governor Wallace each month. We'd like for you to fill it out if you'd like to receive it. And also, you can enclose your own personal check if you'd like to, to help us continue to organize our capability and our vote-getting potential.
Jack, uh, where were you when you heard that McGee had finished at four under? Well, I think I was going down the 12th fairway, and I heard uh, some clapping at 18. I knew Jerry was playing 18, so I assumed he had pulled a short putt or something and tapped in for a par. I really don't know what he did, but uh, I knew he would played a good round, and uh, I knew that uh, from that point I had to make two birdies uh, to win the tournament. By then, your putts were beginning to fall for you, though, weren't they? Well, not quite yet, but uh, I'd been close all day, and then finally at 15, I got the first good putt of the of the day, about a 20 footer that was down the hill, and of course then I followed it right up at 16 and 17. Well, this makes you feel good winning the Byron Nelson two years in a row, doesn't it? Oh, sure does. Uh, you know, Byron's a great credit to the game, and uh, I feel very proud to have my name on the same trophy that bears his name. And uh, of course, playing here on a great golf course like Preston Trails, and uh, it's uh, you know, it, it makes you feel awful good. What are your plans for the next three weeks? My plans are to go home and uh, uh, relax a little bit and play baseball coach, uh, father, and uh, spend a little time in the office, maybe get a little fishing in and, uh, uh, you know, get reacquainted with uh, the troops at home. The card says, wishing you a perfect Mother's Day. Now, weather-wise, this isn't exactly the most perfect Mother's Day with rainy, black skies outside, but on the inside, here at the Howard Reed household, it's very nice and very warm.